Tonight, I'm taking something that I'm very familiar with and I'm flipping the switch and doing something different with it. So, stay tuned. Hello, I'm Leona Dooley and this is Ebony, Ivy and Time. And it's in this kitchen where we work hard, love God and family and know without a doubt that everything else is just gravy. Now, it's also here where we do all things in the kitchen for the kitchen. So that means that we decorate, we're cooking, we're planning, we're sharing, and we're sharing our past as well as our future. So if you're interested in those kind of things, Stay tuned. We are preparing pork butt steaks. And you know, the funny thing is, is that uh, I prepare pork butt very often, but I barbecue it and I shred it and we have it on sandwiches. Never had I really thought about actually making, st having steaks out of it. And the other night on television, I happened to notice that uh, someone had had them had them sliced, had a pork butt sliced and prepared, and uh, they threw theirs on the grill. Well, I decided that I wasn't going to put it on the grill. It's a little chilly outside, but I'm going to put together a cracker meal uh, outer covering. And we are going to fry these pork chops. And I tell you what, they are going to come out absolutely beautiful. Now I'm using a seasoned flour. And uh, I'm adding some pepper and some additional uh, salt just to make sure that it is very well seasoned. Now I'm bringing it down a little closer. I've added also in here, as you can see, the crackers, we used the mallet, and now I'm just shaking it up to make sure that it's well mixed. And I'm doing all of this in my Ziploc bag because first of all, I don't want flour all over everything. And you'll see that this is gonna be the perfect vessel for putting the chops in, putting the steaks in, and, um, having it in, in a very clean manner that I like. Now, you know, who would have thought? Pork butt steaks. Now the steaks are not extremely thick. They're probably um, just a little less than a half inch, but they have this bone that's in them. And you're familiar with the pork butt. And it literally, it, it has been sliced into um, steaks. And, um, it's, they're large. They're not small by any means. So now I'm shaking up a little more and getting some things ready because after all, <clears throat> we're going to need to uh, put an egg covering on them. I have egg and a little milk that I've put together in this container. So I'm just going to beat it up a little more. I have my steaks in a Ziploc bag as well. And we are just going to work within these two um, Ziploc bags so that the cleanup is so easy. There's not going to be a lot of mess. I don't like a lot of mess. So I have, I'm have. i going to put in just a tad bit of buttermilk. There we go. Just a little, just enough to loosen that egg up a bit. We're going to do a little bit of a mix for the egg and the buttermilk and as you can see you'll be able to tell once it's all mixed it'll all be pretty much the same color now once we've done that see there we go we've got it we just keep stirring i could have used a larger container it would have made it a lot easier but you know i don't usually do that now i have two pork butt steaks and as you can see, they're a pretty good size. And what we found, this was the first time I had done this, and what we found was that it's almost enough for four people. It was just way too much for one. 
and um, really in spite of even the the bone being there they were still way too large so I'm seasoning the steaks themselves with some salt and pepper and um, making sure that they're going to taste good and now watch I'm going to take our liquids and I'm going to place them into the bag I'm going to pour all the egg and all of the milk right there into that bag get as much air out of it as you can and seal it up now sometimes I do this and I'll do it in the morning and just let them sit in the refrigerator in the liquid in the egg mixture and come back to it in the afternoon and that saves me a little time in the evening now so we're ready well, I'm going to put in about an inch or so of oil into my cast iron skillet. And we're going to also prepare some baked beans. Now they're going to be off to the side. And I'm using some bush and I'm just kicking it up a notch. And so I've got that in there. I'm going to add in some uh, uh, brown sugar, a little squish of mustard and um, get all of that mixed up and I thought mm, I need some pineapple I haven't put pineapple in my baked beans in quite a while and so I thought oh that will be good and you know pineapple and pork is usually a good mix as well so I'm putting that together that's with green peppers and onions and uh, actually this particular uh, can of uh, bush beans had a maple syrup and uh, I thought okay that's pretty good so I'm just doing a little taste there to see if they're ready and uh, we're good to go so I'm gonna let that come up let that cook while we are working on the, the steaks we're waiting for that skillet to get nice and hot and I guess what I found some molasses let's add some molasses because when I'm doing my beans from scratch I always put molasses in so I'm adding about a tablespoon of molasses in if you don't have molasses it's okay but since I had them I might as well use it and uh, it just helps to give it a deep flavor and uh, I love that taste so there we're stirring Hmm. Okay, she's good to go. Now, let's get into the chops, or the pork steak anyway. So you notice when I pick that up, you'll see that it kind of pulls apart a little bit. But I'm going to take it and I'm going to place it over into the bag. Now, remember, anything between these two bags is going to go into the trash once it's all over with. So I'm going to zip lock it and then I'm going to work it around so that the entire uh, pork steak gets covered. And this cracker meal uh, covering I think is going to be delicious. I think it's going to give it a nice texture and uh, so let's get it into the hot skillet. So here we go we got it there and just watch it's going to take that entire pan because it is large there we go be gentle with it you don't want to drop it so there she goes she's in and you can only do one at a time now I, of course I could have put two skillets out but why do that why do that I was good with the one that's one skillet to clean, one pot to clean. We want to keep things as clean as possible, and we don't want a lot of cleanup. So while we're doing that, and that is cooking, I'm working on the second one, getting it out of its liquid and over into the flour. And like I said, I'm going to take the Ziploc bag with the egg mixture. I'm literally going to get the air out of it, zip it up, and put it into the trash so that that's nice and clean. I have nice, hot, soapy water sitting over there that I can just 
rinse my hands very quickly, get things cleaned up, and we're good to go. Now these really didn't take long to do because they're not extremely thick. And I would not suggest having your butcher cut them beyond uh, one uh, half inch. Don't do that because it really does just take too much. If you're going to do that, then definitely you're going to want to grill them. You might try that. But um, if you want a nice crispy steak, then this is a new, new switch. So let's do that. So we're just letting it cook and letting it um, bubble as you can see and I'm just working around in the kitchen getting myself cleaned up trying to get the counters all cleaned up checking on the the pork and the um, baked beans and actually tonight I'm not even turning the oven on so we're not going to worry about them uh, baking them I'm just having one of those evenings where we're going to cook, we're going to get her done, we're going to get it on the plate, and uh, I have a pan in my oven. As you can see, I'm taking it out, and that's what I'm going to lay the steaks on so that they can stay in my upper oven. I have a double oven, and so in that upper portion, I can just put the warming and setting on, and uh, it will keep the steaks warm while the other is being cooked. Now, you know, I thought about it. Um, this would make a great, oh man, this is going to take you back. A pork chop sandwich. Oh my goodness. Slice these in half before you even fry them. Fry them and put them on some white bread. Mm, 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 mm. And while they're hot, Oh my goodness, they'll be so good. And you know what, for those of you who are young, you may not have had a pork chop sandwich on white bread. And you know, it's gotten to the point now that so many young people, and, and, and I applaud you for you know being health conscious, because I, I, I really am. But uh, I try to make my own white bread, but, um, the white bread just adds a layer of the softness and the smell of the bread. There's nothing better. So we're getting the, the rest of the vegetables together, um, getting paper towel for the steak, and it's gonna be time to flip. And watch this, be careful. There we go. Oh, it is so, pretty. Now that's perfect. That's perfect. So I've got the, got it on the other side. It's not going to take long for the other side because the first side is the one where you want to make sure that it has cooked well. Now once you check out this towel that I'm using, I don't know if you remember, it's been a while back. So if you're new, you may not remember, you may not have come across it yet, but I don't throw away anything. So my bath towels, when they are old and they aren't such that I want to use in the bathroom because I am particular about how the towels look, I cut my towels into six equal parts and I use those towels in the kitchen. And the reason for that is that it's very hard to find dish rags that are thick. I like the feel of the thick towel. And so I just trim them up every now and then. And, uh, uh, but I use my towel. So I, I know he looks pretty rough, but it's really not. And it's a great, great towel. I can use them for so much. So let's see if, if it's ready. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, there we go. And there it is. I'm going to let it lay on this paper towel, soak up any oils, and now it's time to get our second one in. And once we've done that, whoop, we're finished. There we go, gently. There we go. Now, 
get it down in the oil and that's chop number two and now I really can clean up because I'm finished with the the cover the coating and uh, I'm just gonna let that cook stop and before we go any further let me remind you please right now go down to the like and click on like and if you're not a subscriber to my channel please make sure that you hit the subscribe button and also hit the notification bell so you will know every time I upload a video remember we do things here at Ebony Ivy and Time in the kitchen for the kitchen so don't forget to like the video and to subscribe Thank you. It is just about time for dinner to be on the table. We are looking at that second steak. I'm giving it a flip. You can see how pretty it is. The other one is already in the oven. And uh, the beans are hot. So we're just finishing things up. And... Uh, I tell you what, I can just feel the the vibe of whew, dinner is almost over. Yay! So I'm still wiping and that's what we do all through dinner. We just clean and wipe and clean and wipe because we want as little to be on that stove as possible. And uh, we want to have as little to do after dinner as we possibly can. So we're getting things cleaned up and just messing around in the kitchen. You know, I hope you're taking the time to bring your little ones into the kitchen so they can see what you're doing. And if nothing else, they can sit and they can talk with you and giggle with you or you can oversee homework or whatever it is during this time while you're just kind of moseying around the kitchen and the smells are wonderful because you know your little ones get excited about what's going on in the kitchen and it's not really just about eating the food number one they want to be there with you number two they're learning by observing what you're doing and someone who's in that kitchen other than you down the line is going to want to do what you're doing exactly the way you're doing it so remember that have fun in the kitchen you're going to laugh but throughout this entire meal i was actually in communication by way of my apple ipad mini and i had my granddaughter right there with me so we're chit chatting it up while I am cooking. And uh, she's so funny because she's saying, Ooh, that looks good. Ooh, that looks good. Well, what are you doing? And she's asking questions. And uh, that part of it, I absolutely love. So tonight's dinner, we're going to have some rice. We're going to put those beans on the rice. Yes, that's how I like it. And we're going to add our steak. So let's get the plates ready. Well, you know what? The plates are ready. And I am so glad that you decided to stop by our house tonight and have dinner with us. You know what? It's all about the love. And I love having you right here. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you will my uh, videos as you watch them and please be sure to watch it till the end because you never know what might be at the end of any video also i hope that this week is going to be absolutely wonderful for you and if you're having one of those weeks just deal with it and know that the next time the next day is a new start and we're going to make it better and brighter because we're meant to shine 
Have a blessed time, and I'll see you soon right here at Ebony, Ivy, and Tom.